In the 1970s, the United States had three revolutionary fighters enter service in the F-14 Tomcat, F-15 Eagle, and F-16 Fighting Falcon. Today, two of these platforms remain not only in service, but in production, with only the Top Gun F-14 relegated to museum duty. Today, plenty of airplane nerds, like this author, still count the F-14 Tomcat among their favorite aircraft of all time. So what gives? Why was Maverick's ride not only retired early by very literally being fed into the industrial shredder, while the Eagle and Viper continue to roll off assembly lines to this day? The truth is, the F-14 Tomcat was a highly advanced fighter that was really purpose-built for a world-ending nuclear conflict. When you look back on the program, its challenges, and subsequent solutions, the image becomes a bit clearer. The Grumman F-14 Tomcat was an incredibly capable aircraft, and with good reason. In an era before intercontinental ballistic missiles, ICBMs, had matured into the go-to nuclear weapon delivery vehicle they would become, the Tomcat was designed in large part to neuter the Soviet Union's most potent means of putting nukes on American soil, their fleet of strategic bombers. In the present tense, the idea of a foreign power flying bombers over the continental United States seems practically impossible. Thanks is no small part to America's broad military footprint, advanced detection technology, and today's geopolitical climate. That wasn't the case at the peak of the Cold War. The threat posed by Soviet long-range bombers was so dire, in fact, that before air-to-air -air missiles had become prevalent in the 1960s, the U.S. actually developed a rocket-propelled air-to-air nuclear weapon that would wipe out entire formations with a single launch. With the threat of Soviet bombers armed with nuclear weapons or anti-ship missiles at the forefront of their minds, Grumman designed the largest and heaviest carrier fighter in history, with a fair amount of that weight dedicated to the new Phoenix missile, and the onboard systems required to leverage it. All told, the F-14 could use that combined 50,000-plus pounds of thrust to push the aircraft to an astonishing Mach 2.3 and its variable sweep wing design gave it excellent handling at both the low speeds required for carrier landings and the high speeds needed to intercept Ivan before he could deploy his anti-ship missiles toward an American carrier. Thanks to that variable sweep wing design, the F-14 could turn tighter than most of its capable fourth-generation competition, including the small and nimble F-16 under the right circumstances. That meant it could not only cover ground quickly to engage Soviet bombers, the Tomcat really could dogfight and win, if called upon to do so. When fueled up and ready to go, the F-14 weighed in at 61,000 pounds, which is almost twice that of the future F-A-18, and quite a bit more than twice the weight of a fully-fueled F-16 Fighting Falcon. Despite all of that heft, the Tomcat still needed to be fast, so Grumman paired the F-14 with Pratt & Whitney's TF-30 engines, originally fitted to the F-111B they had failed to sell the Navy on. Each engine could produce 14,560 pounds of thrust under military power, with the afterburner kicking output up to 25,100 pounds. The F-14's variable sweep wing design is one of the aircraft's most striking visual characteristics, and there's no denying that the premise behind it makes sense. The wings could vary from 20 degrees to 68 degrees while airborne, to allow for the best possible flight characteristics, at both low and high speeds. Wing positioning was controlled automatically by the central air data computer on board, ensuring the wings were positioned for the best possible lift-to-drag ratio for each situation, but they could also be controlled manually by the pilot. As you can imagine, a system that capable and advanced was not only complicated and heavy, it also required quite a bit of upkeep, 
Depending on the Navy estimate, the F-14 Tomcat required between 30 hours and 60 hours of maintenance for every one hour it spent in the air. The high prices associated with maintaining the complicated sweep wing systems is often cited as one of the most pressing reasons for the Tomcat's early retirement, when compared to its American fighter peers.